Amen. Can we give God some praise to be in the house of the Lord? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, we have been in a mini series about spiritual warfare. Um, and I need you all to know that there is a great tactic that the enemy does is that when you start making breakthrough, the attacks start coming faster, stronger, quicker. Amen? And the enemy tries desperately to derail you off your assignment. So today's scripture reading is coming from uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Yeah, I went like this. <laughs> 824 in the church Bibles. 1 Timothy chapter 4. A24. And out of respect of the reading of the word, this is not a traditional church. However, when the word of God is being reverenced, please stand and rest unto your feet. Are we there, saints? Amen. 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 1 Timothy chapter 4. And I read New King James. And the subtitle says, The Great Apostasy. Now, the Spirit expressly says, that in later times some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from food, foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good, and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. This is the reading of the word. Father God, I ask that the Holy Spirit decrease me as you increase you. Lord, allow us to dissect this word that we may digest it, that we may build a kingdom of fruit, Lord. Father, open up the windows of heaven and pour out a rhema word over this house, Lord. Let us eat from your hand today, fresh manna. Father, release your warring, protective, ministering, and healing angels, north, south, east, and west. Father, I ask that you put your watchmen outside of the doors of this place. Father, I pray that anyone who has come with confusion or double-mindedness, Lord, that you completely take over their thoughts right now. Father, give them eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to receive your word. I give you the glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Today's title of this message is I'm walking away. I'm walking away. Amen? Amen. We have to understand that a faith walk is not a one-way street. A faith walk goes two ways. See, we all expect for God to give, 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 do, 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 do. Help, 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 help. And we don't want to do our part. I've had folks that we've, you know, prayed and then the Holy Spirit gives them a word and then they come back and they're like standing at the altar like, do, 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 I want another word. And then you give them another word and then you, do, 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 a couple months later, they want another word and another word and another word. And you done gave them four or five words and then the Holy Spirit will tell you, er, no more. Oh, okay. What happened, Lord? They didn't do the first word. They didn't do the second word. They didn't do the third word. Why do they want to keep getting the word if they're not going to do anything about it? Why are they going to? Why are they not uh, uh, allowing themselves to hear what the word of God spoke and for them to do their part? 
The Bible says that if you draw nigh to me, I will draw nigh unto you. There's a big misconception amongst the uh, the, 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 the Christian uh, 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 community that, well, if I take one step toward God, he'll take two steps towards me. No, it says you take one step toward me and I will take one step towards you. It's one step at a time. This is not a race. Okay, it's a walk. It's a faith walk. So when things aren't going as fast as you think they should be going, you got to keep in mind divine delay. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why God isn't giving you that promotion right now. There's a reason why you're not in that relationship just yet. You know why? Because you ain't ready for it. Amen. You got to understand that if you can't get you cleaned up and cleared out, you are going to be infectious and infective towards somebody else. But we don't see that. Oh, I'm perfect. Y'all ain't heard me. I'm perfect. Amen. Right? You got to you gotta get to the place where you detoxify yourself, come out from amongst them, and allow the Holy Spirit to move in your life, to heal you from all the relationships. If you've been with Sally, Susie, Sheila, and, and, and she, she, all four of them are now going into the new relationship with Nadine. Don't get it twisted. <laughs> and ladies, you've been with uh, 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 Julio and, 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 and Tuki and, and JoJo and, right? Guess what? And now you're trying to hook up with Michelangelo? You bringing all that to the relationship. You are. You have to detoxify yourself. Do you not understand that? And I don't, I don't know why I'm going there, but the Holy Spirit just had me go there. When you are intimate with another human being, the Bible said that when God created Adam and Eve, he created them that the two would do what? Become one. And what? Procreate. So guess what? If you are being intimate with somebody and you guys are releasing bodily, interchanging, fluids and you are now their DNA is in your DNA and your DNA is in their DNA there is something supernatural about that and then you wonder why you can't get your mind right then you wonder why the next relationship all you keep doing is comparing them to somebody else you have to detoxify you have to cleanse yourself from the last person you was with step out what's wrong with us today we can't sit and be single for three weeks? Oh my God, I'm going to turn into an old woman. I'm going to turn into an old man. I need a man to validate me. I need, I double dog dare you to allow yourself to cleanse yourself and to get in the word of God and be by yourself with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Get to know you first. Amen. 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 Now, the Spirit expressly says that in later times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. Paul is writing to his younger brother in Christ, Timothy. How many of you have heard me use the expression, everybody should have a Paul, everybody should have a Timothy? Right? So Paul was the more experienced disciple. Timothy was the younger disciple, but he was eager. He was on fire. He wanted to learn the word. How can you, yourself, go from being a Timothy to a Paul if you won't allow somebody to be a Paul to you? Amen. This is where the church gets jacked up. Too many people want to be Paul. Too many people want to be the head guy. Too many people... Let me tell you something. Ain't nothing wrong with being the second in command. Nothing at all. Daniel was second in command. And he had the providence to, of the kingdom. He ran the kingdom under the king. There are many in the Bible that were second in command. There's nothing wrong with that. You don't have to be the top guy. We went to a little uh, a conference and, and, and the, 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 the guest pastor was, was under this other pastor, Morris Cirillo, and he said, I've been the number two guy my whole career. He said, but there's blessings in serving the top guy. Amen. Amen. See, we, we, got, we got to get out of this. I got to be number one. I need all the shine. 
Don't you know God is looking at you saying, if you just looking for shine, guess what? Then you really ain't my servant. Because you're too busy trying to get glorified than allowing me to use you the way I need to use you. Okay? So Paul is writing to Timothy. And Paul is very aware, very aware of this heavy burden that has come along with the responsibility of Timothy being this minister in this church. Timothy is pastoring a church in Ephesus. He is surrounded, oh, y'all better catch this, with false teachings, corrupt teachers, okay, and, and, and people who are trying to encourage him to do it the way they want them to do it. Did that make, did that make sense? Mm -hmm. How many of you in here right now are living life and there's people around you influencing you and encouraging you to do it the way they want you to do it? That's a dangerous game to play. Because is it coming from a good place or is it coming from a place of control? Is it coming from a place of love or is it coming from a place where I'm trying to help you grow? See, and you got to look, you got to come back and get out your emotions and your feelings because your emotions and your feelings will send you straight to the pit of hell. But if you understand that this person is really coming at you because they care about you and they're really trying to feed you sound advice, sound doctrine, sound word to help you go and grow to another level, you can't do nothing but respect that. But if this person is just trying, you're going to do it my way. Because I said so. Because I lived that life and I've been there and I've done it. And I've, I've experienced the things that you're going through. And, and I'm just trying to save you a headache. Okay, your intent may be good. But your method is not going to help this person. And you got to remember, a prophet is not worthy in their own house. Okay? We like to preach. And, and all parents in this room. I'm a parent. I got six sons. I got one daughter. Okay? I will talk to you till I'm blue in the face. And you still going to do what I told you not to do. <laughs> then I got somebody just doo -doo -doo out the blue. Hey, man, I heard there was iron down at this place. And, you know, you can sign up. And my husband looked at me and said, did you hear that? I've been telling this boy we can get a job for how long? And this guy comes along out of nowhere. Oh, really? Where are they hiring at? I'm going on Monday. <clears throat> Right? True story. Very true story. <laughs> a prophet is not worthy in their own house. They didn't receive Jesus in his own house, in his own village. Why do you think they're hearing you? That's just the way it's, that's just the way we are as humans, right? You really love your daughter, your son, right? Get somebody unattached to them to speak life into them. Oh, I don't think y'all caught that. Get somebody else to speak life into them. Amen. Amen. Amen? Amen. So, Paul is like, he got all these people he knows is surrounding Timothy. So he has been led by the Holy Spirit to reach out to Timothy and to ad advise him and warn him of these false, corrupt, uh, 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 snakes that are that are at him right and he wants to remind him that these more seasoned manipulators will sniff out an inexperienced pastor and take full advantage will they not mm -hmm. you got folks in ministry that just just been in ministry a year or two and all of a sudden they're appointing oh you look you look like you know what you're talking about because they heard you quote two scriptures come on up I'm gonna put you over to children ministry oh you look like you look like a good praiser you gonna be the praise and worship leader ain't got no fruit on the tree right so you are you are opening up the pulpit to folks that have not been seasoned in the word of God and now when they go to usher their gift, quote, their gift, not God's gift, their gift, over the people, confusion takes place. 
the pot is stirred. It's so many different things going through so many different minds. Well, 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 this is what I get from this, and this is what I understand from that. No, no, no. What does the word of God say? Right? Amen. What does the word of God say? Right? So we have to understand that Paul was trying to get to Timothy. And he says, I need you to understand that there's folks that are coming to take advantage of you. See, today, right now, there are too many people in the churches that are eager to please man, and they are so afraid to disappoint anybody. Oh, I, I bet not offend nobody, because if I offend you, I might lose you as a tither. I don't want to offend you because you, 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 you got a big family and you keep the seats full. Come on, y'all. Right? So... He doesn't want Timothy to get sucked into that. And right now, we need to understand that there are so many cracks in the foundation of the body of the Christ, the body of Christ and the churches that the world is mocking us. It's mocking us. But the Bible says these things were going to come to happen, come to pass. He said it was only going to be a remnant left. A very small group of people that are really going to believe in the Word of God and live by the Word of God and not be Christian but Christ like. Amen? Amen. So, we got to understand that a little leaven in the loaf will do what? Ruin it. Mm -hmm. So, Paul is acting as a big brother, should, and trying to have Timothy avoid some really bad growing pains, right? And all churches are going to go through growing pains. And not every pastor got all the, the, the lessons and the answers and the, 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 the situations mapped out in a, in a, in a, in a, 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 a playbook, right? Because life happens. It's not, it, it's not planned and it's not expected. There are things that are going to happen that you just cannot control. You got to deal with it. What do we do? Well, the first thing I do know is go before God. Bring it to the Savior. Tell the Lord, I can't handle this mess no more. It's too much. My testimony was I was tired of being tired. And those of you that know me know how much my family went through. The devil was not playing with me. He wasn't playing patty cake. He was trying to take my head off and assassinate all of my children. They are all, I, I birthed three biological and the rest I inherited by marriage. But all three of my biologicals were victim of gun violence. He was not playing with me. He wanted to kick me, keep me down, and to just completely derail me from what God was calling me to do. There are you sitting here that God has been trying to be in your life and the enemy is just coming at you left and right and sideways. But you got to at some point make, a, make, make up in your mind, am I going to go through this mess and allow God to show me the better side? Because those dreams, those desires, those aspirations, where do you think they came from? Anybody in here got dreams? Yeah. Anybody got like like future plans? Like I can see myself in the Bahamas. I can see myself traveling the world. I can see myself. Come on, I know we all. Who do you think gave you them dreams? He created you. You are uniquely and wonderfully, marvelously created in His image and His likeness. And everything Amen. that's in your head, He put it in there. Amen. And He gave you free will. And see, sometimes you know when you be seeing little glimpses of things about your life. And what you think it should be, trust and believe that's what God intended for you. You just got to line up your will to get matched up with his will so you can get from point A to point B to point C to point D and etc. Amen. 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 In the meantime, you got corrupt church, you got corrupt people who are really trying to... Uh, deviate God's people from their walks. And I mean that. Okay? When the Holy Spirit told me you're going to go and you're going to start a church and, and, and they got no problem getting people to the altar, but the problem is there are no disciples being raised up. 
Nobody is functioning in their gifts. Nobody is growing as Christ-like men and women of God. There's a zillion, trillion, I'm exaggerating, but you know, Christians. Don't tell, no, I keep telling y'all, quit telling people y'all are Christian. Let them see the Christ in you. Amen. Let them see Christ-likeness in your walk. Amen. Quit telling them I'm a Christian. I remember the first few times I told people I was a Christian, they gave me a crazy look. I didn't understand. How come they're not happy for me? Because they knew Christians was phony. Christians is full of boo-boo. They're not right. They're a bunch of hypocrites. Okay? But if you live in Christ's life, people are going to identify you There's something different. There's something exceptional about this person. They don't act like everybody else. I just insulted them and they didn't even get angry. I just talked about them and they heard about it and they didn't even react. Right? How many of us can get to that level? How many of us can allow God to be God and, and, and take up for you? We're going to need some chairs. Um, how many people can let God humiliate you? Did you hear what I said? Let God humiliate you. Okay? And you not worry about it. How many people can walk and get hit upside the head and be like, that was a learning curve. No, we want to retaliate. We want to get back. I want you to know, you can't mess with me. I'm going to get you back. You did that to me, I'm going to do it to you. You serving the devil. That's not of God. God said, let vengeance be mine. Did he not? We all read the same Bible? That's what he said, right? He said, I will make your enemies your footstool. He didn't say, Lisa, now she talked about you. Now go over there and, and crack her windshield out. <laughs> no, no, I used to get a little crazy, right? <laughs> he didn't tell, he, he, no, 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 no. There's too many people running around trying to be poly perfect, religified, and then as soon as they get in their house behind closed doors, they smoking, they drinking, they sexing, they texting, they doing all this crazy stuff, right? And then they want to come to church. Oh, hallelujah, 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 right? Do you not know God sees that? He's omnipresent, right? A tree is known by its fruit. If you got discord in your house, don't keep harping on it. Get on your face and start praying about it. Start reading Psalms 91. Start declaring and decreeing the blood of Jesus over your children, over your grandbabies, over anybody and everybody that walks through your house. Yes, yes, yes. That's good. Things will start to shift. So Paul is warning Timothy. It's coming. Your church is growing. They're going to start coming to, dis to, to disrupt what you doing? And because you're young and immature and you ain't got nobody, you ain't got Paul, you ain't got me there with you, you better be really, really careful as to what's about to happen. Right? And he told him that you're going to go through some growing pains. But you should understand that they are to be really quickly realized and corrected. They should not be overlooked and they should not be ignored. When you fall into a, 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 a mistake, when you fall into a, a, a place of pressing, don't just shoosh it away. Ask God, why am I going through this? What is the purpose of me dealing with this pain right now? What are you trying to teach me, Lord? Right? See, the, the definition of insanity is to do what? Do the same thing over and over and expect a different outcome. Right? So if it didn't work last week, why do you think it's going to work this week? And we try to hold on to people that clearly we need to let go of. They're toxic. They are toxic. So don't ignore. Paul is almost giving... Timothy, a prophetic warning or was he just in general speaking 
of the Old Testament, the spirit of the Old Testament, or the spirit of the present? Or was he speaking about the spirit that was to come? Or was he talking about a little bit of all of it? Because see, he says, now the spirit expressly says that in later times, some will depart from the faith. Given he to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Right? Whatever the warning was, it was clear. Departing from the faith, the things of God. How many people in here are witnesses to seeing how many people have departed from the things of God? Right? People don't even believe in God. The universe. Right? Coexist. But the Bible says there's only one God, and then I have people that will challenge, uh, uh, challenge me with, well, how do you know your God is the God? Well, how about I give you something to chew on? I charge you three days. You fast, you pray, and you read the Word of God. And you talk to Jesus. You ask him to prove to you that he is real. And you come back and talk to me after them three days. And let's see what you decide. Is he really God or is he not really God? Amen. Because Amen. I can guarantee you, he will show up. How many of us, amen. How many of us have flipped the Bible open and you're like, ooh. Seem like that's talking to me. <laughs> you go to church. Oh my God, the pastor is all in my business today. <laughs> Who told her what I was going through? Right? How many of us have had experiences like that? That's the Holy Spirit. You gotta understand, He knows what you need to hear when you need to hear it. Amen? So I challenge you, if you are straddling the fence with, is God really real? Is Jesus really the only way to the kingdom of heaven? Three days? You done tried everything else. You done tried ecstasy. You done tried, you done tried meth. You done tried, I'm going there. You know, because some people get high so they can go on a, oh, oh. I'm gonna go to the outer limits. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna channel. I wanna go to. I wanna go to a spiritual place. The, I'm not lying. Y'all know that the um, Chinese culture they used to puff on oh, hat. Was it hash or heron or hashish, right? And they would puff on some of that stuff, and they would go into meditation, and they would. The Indians, come on, what was they chewing on? They, what, what is it? Peyote. It's a hallucinogen. I ain't lying. I know what I'm talking about. I done had a few experiences myself. I had some cookies one day. I told Ronald, Jesus is standing right there. God told me he's going to come get me soon. My husband said, let me take you and go lay you down. That's a true story. I'm not like they snuck some cookies on me.
So we need to understand that 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 that, that uh, 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 when we are seeking, when we are not sure of what is really real, then guess what? We're gonna try this. We're gonna try that. We're gonna experiment. We're gonna taste and see, right? But then when you realize that wasn't it, that wasn't right. See, because let me tell you something, I, and I've shared this, and I'm, I, I'm, I'm very transparent about my walk because I want you guys to get it. And if you look around this church, it's some young folks in here. It's some hungry folks in here. Amen. amen. It's some folks that really want to grow. Amen. Yeah. And I will tell you in a heartbeat, the first time I had my, my a, a, a real encounter with the Holy Spirit, it was a high that I cannot, it's, it's the best high I've ever tried. Wow. Yes. Okay. It's better than sex. It was better than drugs. It was the best time. And I know you guys are like, this lady is a whack. <laughs> but anybody in yes. here that knows what I'm talking about knows I am not lying. Yes. Amen. 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 And I'm serious. Amen. I'm so serious. The Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. When you taste and you really see that the Lord is good, you don't need nothing else. Right. You start to realize, I want more of that. Because immediately along with that, what do we what do we do things for for, for a feeling, right? We we want a reaction, we want a euphoric action. But what if you in the in in, in the uh, 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 building your relationship with the Lord, you get this euphoric action, and then all of a sudden you realize, oh my God, I got peace. I got joy. Amen. I got a little happiness with this. Amen. I'm not tripping off of what I was tripping off of earlier. Like, I could be in the middle of a storm and I'm okay. Amen. Anybody been there? Amen. 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 He's real. Now, people are departing. We are in, we are in a world right now that Paul warned about deceiving spirits. And, 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 and that there were going to be doctrines of demons. And we see a great deal of falling away from the doctrine of Jesus Christ. Folks have lost or rather walked away from their faith. But I came by here today to remind somebody it is a trick of the enemy. And the enemy is very <clears throat> slick. So somebody needs to wake up. You guys really, really, really need to wake up. And, and, and somebody needs to understand and confess out of their mouths that I'm walking away. I'm walking away from every lie the enemy told me. I'm walking away from all the tricks that the enemy has been trying to speak into my life. I'm walking away from all the deceptive uh, 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 lifestyle choices that I've made that I thought I was going in the right direction, but I'm walking away from my mistakes and I'm gonna walk towards Jesus. Yeah. I'm gonna walk away from worldly temptations. I'm gonna walk away from fleshly pleasures. I'm gonna walk away from my emotions that are driven by lies and tactics of Satan. Can I get anybody in here to touch and agree? Amen. Amen. Can I get anybody in here to understand the spirit, okay, that is in this place is a spirit of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Yes. That we have to understand that there is another spirit that is trying to keep us to fall away from Jesus. Okay? It is not a spirit of love. If you really pay attention to everything that's being pushed, <clears throat> one uh, 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 one religion um, love everybody accept anybody receive everybody everybody has a right how dare you condone this group and that group and you you got the you got the uh, uh, just accept people where there are you got three and four year olds that play with a doll and all of a sudden they mamas and daddies is like oh you're a girl now one of my cousins posted something that, that, that the doctors are trying to tell them that children cannot have uh, 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 circumcisions okay, until they're old enough to say, I want this done. Now, if anybody understands where the root of a circumcision came from, it is a covenant with God's people. 
Oh, the devil is crafty, ain't he? People wake up. It's a lot of stuff going on. I had my sister Christine tell me they had at the uh, public library drag day for the kindergartners to read books in Brentwood, Oakley. Where? Brentwood. They opened a new library and they were they were just something. So they had a brand new library opening day and they had a drag queen reading to these children. So, so let me ask you this. Do you guys not understand what is being projected over the people, over the kids, the lies that are being spoken? Oh, I'm about to go somewhere with this in a minute. Let me tell you something. I need somebody in this house to touch and agree that, 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 that there has definitely been a falling away from Jesus. And I'm going to let you know something. Uh, 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 folks are in this place, and, and, and in the world, and, and if you're doing it, you better stop. But folks are busy burning candles, but uh, burning incense and sage, going to uh, 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 Baba Laos. Anybody know what a Baba Lao is? Going to Baba Laos, going to seek mediums, psychics, tarot card readers, and allowing the doors to open. I even dabbled in it. Anybody from the islands, the Caribbeans, Trinidad, Louisiana, Voodoo, Santeria, Botanica, Iruba, the Oshuns, the Orishas, the Catholic candles that have the saints on them. Amen. Amen. Those saints represent deities of the African gods. Because see, when they were in the, in the, uh, 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 uh. Oh my God, where were they at? They were in, I wanna say, buh, 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 buh. the Caribbean and Louisiana, they could not practice and worship their gods. So they started to, y'all look this up, started to hide their deities, their gods, behind Catholic saints. So a lot of people think they're going into the store buying St. Jude, St. John, St. this, St. that, and that's the saint that they're praying to. Mm -hmm. God said, you don't need nobody. He ripped the veil. You don't need a man to get to God. You just need to open your mouth and pray. So now you got these candles in your house, and what you really don't understand is that you are actually ushering in a door, a window for these uh, 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 ancient uh, uh, deities to be allowed in your house. How many people have ever saged before? Do you know what that does? You should know what that does. Dan is Dan is my Native American brother back there. Amen. It channels the ancestors, right? Does it not? To 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 allow their spirits to come through. For, 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 for uh, uh, whether it's for advice or whatever the reason, right? That's what y'all do. You, you tap in. And then the other thing is they usually take peyote and, and, and tap into their animalistic spirit. Who am I in the spirit? What animal am I like? Right? This is demons. People don't understand that. This is demons. There's some demonic stuff attached to this. And then you wonder why you got so many problems going on. Why you can't ever keep a job. Why, why there's always problems with your relationships. Why is there problems always with your, with your uh, uh, finances. Why is there problems with your family. Why? How many people are constantly sick? One sickness after another sickness after another sickness after another sickness after. I mean as soon as you get off with the flu, now you got some kind of other ailment. Is that regular? Do y'all understand that that is a curse? We are not supposed, we have the authority to speak over our bodies. We better wake up, people. God gave you a powerful weapon, your tongue. Amen? Life and death is in the power of your tongue. And when you start to really allow the Holy Spirit to minister to these and open up these and let this receive, you will start to see that a lot of things that you've been dabbling in 
was really trying to pull you into darkness and keep you away from his light. See, because I did all of it. I was reading tarot cards. I was doing the shells. I was burning sage. I... You know why? Because the enemy knew who I was. My dumb, dumb self, I didn't know who I was. I was looking. I was seeking. I didn't understand. And so I was trying to go after anything that would connect me to identifying what am I here for? What is my purpose? Who am I? What am I? Am I talking to anybody in the house? Amen. Amen. Talking to me. I remember when you first when I first met you, you was doing it. I said, I had I'm an altar here. in my house. I said, I'm out of here. He ain't lying. I, said, I had an altar in my here. house. <laughs> am I lying? No. <laughs> I left quick. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> but he came back. <laughs> She so, picked them cars up too. Huh? I said, you picked them cars up too. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I did. No, but no. There was a little, anybody, had, does anybody ever been into a Botanica store before? Yeah. They got the little stone man with the little cowrie shell eyes, the Eligua. You put them behind your door, you walk in somebody else, you see that, you know it's some witchcraft going on. There's a lot he, in the mission district. Yes, a, a lot. And let me tell you something, man. Oh, thank you for telling me that. We walked into a store. I don't know where we was at. We walked. As soon as we walked in, I took like two, three steps. Soon as I walked into the store, I turned around. I looked at Ronald. I said, I feel sick. He said, what you mean you feel sick? I said, I feel like I'm a vomit. Anytime I get around demonic forces, my spirit fights it. So he, we was in there looking for something. I don't remember. We walked in, walked around, and then my head started hurting. And then I started feeling like... Oh no, I'm about to get sick. I need to get out of here. So as soon as I started praying, I anointed myself, I started praying, I walked outside, and then we went, we took a couple steps, I immediately felt better. We got ready to walk in another building, I felt it again. The Holy Spirit said, They're, they perform witchcraft in this building, this building, and this building. And it was thick. I ended up getting sick. Because you gotta understand, when you, when, you, uh, when you are light, the dark can't live, around you there's a collision it doesn't it doesn't gel well that's why people who are trying to serve God and you got you got children who are still in darkness you guys are not going to be able to minister to them they can't hear you just keep loving on them I have to turn my son over to to God d d d do what you will with him Lord I can't I done did all I can do that boy and, and this is no joke my son has faced death the last time I counted was 17 times. And that was the last time I counted. There's been about four more incidences since then. I'm talking head on collisions, being shot, being shot at, being thrown from cars, head on collision with motorcycles. It's just horrible experiences. And when you understand who you are and who you are, it all starts to make sense. The pieces start to click together. So, again, if you are wandering in this world and you're not really understanding who you are and who you are, charge three days. Charge. Pray fast. Read the word. Speak to Jesus, right? Pray and read the word of God. See, the enemy comes as a source of light, but really he's darkness, right? And he wants us to believe that he is light. And I want to share something. I, 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 I'm, I'm almost done. The earliest, I'm, I'm, I want to break this down. The earliest influences into the modern age of, or quote, new age, was way back in the 18th century by a Swedish Christian mystic. The name of this person was Emanuel Swedenborg. He was professing the ability to communicate with angels, demons, and spirits. And he was ultimately trying to merge science and religion together. 
Then, in the late 19th century, another major influencer of New Age was this philosophical society group, which was actually an occult group, who the lady co-founded it was this Russian woman named Helena Blot, Blots, wait, Blavatsky. She wrote Helena. Okay, she wrote books called Isis Unveiled and The Secret Doctrine. And all throughout biblical history, Satan has been trying to infiltrate the word of God and God's people. And the less the word of God is taught correctly and not compromised by self-interpretation, but only by Holy Spirit revelation, the further away people have walked away from God and from Jesus. Can I get an amen? Amen. So, no one is seeing miracle signs and wonders. So the enemy is capitalizing by uh, giving these transcendental meditation, uh, having folks dabble in yoga, things that can be experienced and felt. Oh, am I talking to anybody in the house? But little do folks really know that if you would just call on the name of Jesus. Yes. Oh, somebody. If you would just ask the Holy Spirit to fill you up. Ask the Lord himself to touch you. Ask him to speak to you. To comfort you. To be with you. To hold you. To just sit with you. He will be right there. Amen. He's waiting on you. He's asking, will you seek me? Will you walk away from your foolery in this world? This is the last scripture. Forbidding to marry, commanding to abstain from foods which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For every creature of God is good and nothing is to be refused if it is received with thanksgiving. For it is sanctified by the word of God and power. We see breakdowns of marriages today. Who is talking to the young people about the structure of family? There is no structure of family. The structure of family, there, there, there's so much confusion in that. You got them addressing four and five year olds about you to be whoever you want to be. Right? It's confusion, y'all. We, 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 we got to understand that folks are teaching in the schools, even in the hospitals, that they are on board and that there is something going on and they got to get to the younger children. See, the old folks, they done did their job. And, they, and if you trip on it, the babies from the 80s and the 90s, they turned into a hot mess. Half of them was on drugs. Half of them would have had no father figure in their life. This has been a destructive plan that Satan has laid out. And so then you had all these children born in this era, right? And there were no two parent households. So these kids basically raised themselves. And now they're trying to raise themselves with no structure, with no, no belief system, with no God, with no foundation. And they're going for anything and everything. Amen? Amen. So it is our responsibility to start understanding what is going on around you. Did you know that if you have a minor daughter or a son and you take them to the hospital and you think they've been sexually assaulted or, or tampered with and you ask the doctor, the doctor will tell you, I can't tell you that? Right. Right? So if your kid doesn't want to tell you what's going on, they have rights to keep it to themselves. But little do you know your child is battling with committing suicide because what has happened to them? We have to pray over our babies. We have to start speaking life over our babies. You have to have an open dialogue with your children and grandchildren. You need to lose the condemnation. Stop 
beating your kids up. Love them. If they going through, love them right where they at. I don't care how much uh, 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 bad stuff you done did. I don't care that I can see demons all over you when you walk in my house, son. I'm going to love you right where you are at. Love covers a multitude of sin, y'all. It does. We cannot condemn them. God loved us, loved on us enough that we made it out. Somebody was praying for you. All them grandmothers that prayed, their prayers got through. You're here. They didn't kept you from hurt, harm, and danger. Amen. 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 And he loves the baby. And I want to remind every parent in here that he loaned them to you. And he loves them more than you could ever love them. Because he made them. You got to trust them. Somebody in here say, I'm walking away. I'm walking away. away. I'm walking away from being helicopter mom or dad. I'm walking away from being helicopter dad or mom. Amen. I'm picking up my weapons. I'm picking up my weapons. My Bible. My, Bible. my prayers. My prayers. My oil. My oil. And I'm going to battle. In the spirit realm. In the spirit and realm. not in the flesh. Amen. Give God some praise. Amen. You gotta walk away. From emotions and feelings and learn to be led by the Spirit. God and God alone. Paul is teaching to, uh, 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 about having a religious spirit, the conscience being seared. We got to understand there's too many rules, there's too many uh, 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 traditions. And what he was really talking about, if we think about how the Catholic priests today are not allowed to marry, but yet they're burning with lust. And it has created this, this, this culture of them abusing children, right? Because they were forbidden to marry. They were also not to eat meat and during certain season. And anybody, I was Catholic, they, you can't eat meat during Lent, right? Mm -hmm. On Fridays. Fridays. On Fridays. Uh, right. For, for, uh, what, what was the origination of Lent? Anybody know why they even doing it? Or they just do it? Well, I had to look it up. The reason why we celebrate Lent, or they celebrated Lent, was because Jesus fasted 40 days and 40 nights. And so it is to remind us to give up something like Jesus gave up for us. And I want to blow your wigs off with this one. How many people knew that because you couldn't eat uh, meat on Friday, that you're going to eat fish, right? Or, or chicken, I believe. Uh, that in 1962... This man who lived in an 87 percent, uh, the, the, the neighborhood was 87 percent of the neighbors were Catholic, a Catholic community, okay? And this man that owned a McDonald's created the first filet of fish sandwich to appease his Catholic community patrons, okay? So this man understood they couldn't eat meat so I'm gonna make this fish sandwich all right show me where that's in the Bible where is it in the Bible that for this amount of time God commanded if you want to know what the rules of what God commanded us to do and what feast to celebrate go to Deuteronomy and Leviticus right that's where he commanded us to feast that's where he commanded us what things to do and what things not to do during certain periods. These man-made religious traditions are dangerous. Very, very dangerous. Okay? We can be misled. But I, 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 I remind you to be like the Bereans and search the scriptures daily. Pray that the Holy Spirit will give you true revelation. See, the enemy man wanted man to follow man. And he wanted us to follow man-made religion and to lose relationship. All throughout the Bible, we hear about the saints murmuring and complaining. And God was right there with 
them. Right? They were in the middle of the desert and they, they were still fussing. I want to remind you that God is omnipresent. He is the Alpha. He is the Omega. And he showed Paul the past, the present, and to come. And we must understand the differences of the true Holy Spirit and the deceiver in this time that we are in. Holy Spirit is definite. Okay? He does not waver. His yes is a yes. His no is a no. It's truth. It exposes lies. The enemy tries to keep the men's hearts hardened and keep their faces away from the faith. And we're living in a time that folks have walked away from the Lord because we are witnesses of how much angel and demon worship is around us. It's everywhere. Amen? Amen. Today, I'm confessing. I'm walking away from all things, and I want this to be your confession. If you mean it in your heart, that I'm going to walk away from all things that distract me from Jesus. I'm walking away from worldly temptations and things to desensitize me from Christ. I'm walking away from the lies of the enemy. I'm going to walk in his truth. I'm going to walk with Christ Jesus. I am going to walk in my new life. My best life. I don't know if you heard me, but I'm going to walk away today. How about you? If you touch the tree, give us a prayer and thank you to me. Hallelujah.